My name is Dr. Ajoy Jana, and I'm an orthopedic surgeon practicing at Methodist Physicians Clinic. I specialize in hip and knee replacement, and I do use the direct anterior approach for hip replacements whenever possible. This video that you're about to watch is an animation of a hip replacement being done through the direct anterior surgical approach. What you're seeing now is the dash line where the skin incision would be made. Typically the incision is four or five inches in length. The video is now pointing out different anatomical structures around the hip, including the femoral artery and nerve, which run uh, towards the front of uh, the hip joint. Next, the, the animation jumps to the surgical procedure, showing retractors being placed around the hip joint. What is unique about the direct anterior approach is that none of the muscles around the hip joint are actually released or cut during this procedure. The scalpel here is incising the hip capsule, which is a thick fibrous tissue layer that uh, surrounds the hip joint and seals it off from the surrounding structures. Once that hip capsule is open, the ball and socket joint can be seen very well. Next, a scalpel is being used to remove some cartilage and tissue, uh, giving better access to the hip joint. A hip skid is inserted between the ball and the socket to allow the head to be pried out of the socket or acetabulum. The next step is to cut the femoral neck so that the head and neck portion can be removed. Here an oscillating saw cuts through the femoral neck. Once the cut is complete, a tool is inserted to help pry the bone apart and the head and neck segment can be removed and discarded. The next step is to expose the acetabulum or socket with retractors. Once a good exposure is obtained, the surgical tools are inserted to shape the socket and prepare it to accept the prosthetic titanium cup, which has a plastic liner inserted next. Once that cup is in place, the surgeon turns his attention to preparing the femur. Here, the retractors are placed around the femur, giving exposure to the canal, The hip capsule is further released uh, and this tool is used to remove any excess bone. A surgical tool called a brooch is inserted into the canal of the femur. The surgeon begins with a very small size and gradually works up to a size that fits nice and tightly into the canal of the femur. Once you get to the appropriate size, the next segment is placed as it is right here and then a trial plastic femoral head is inserted. At this point the ball and socket joint are put back together so that the surgeon can put the leg through a range of motion and test it for stability. Also at this time as an x-ray is brought in to allow the surgeon to check uh, leg length and fit of the prosthesis. If everything looks good, the femur is exposed again with the retractors. The trial parts are removed and replaced with the actual prosthetic implants. If any changes need to be made after the first trial, the surgeon can make adjustments and then he will implant the actual prosthesis. The trial parts were removed. The actual prosthetic implant is shown with a new ceramic femoral head. 
the retractors are removed, the hip is, the ball is placed back into the socket, and then the surgeon closes the wound and the patient is bandaged and taken to the recovery room.